So what's next? So we've narrowed it down to a set of legal terms with a, a tone of severity that we've said was high. Uh, how do we start making this even more actionable? How do we drill in further? Yeah, so um, not only can we look at the content of the communications, but we can actually look at the patterns of communication. Mm. And by that, I mean, what is the topology of this graph? Right. And so um, from an information security perspective, one of the use cases um, that is always of concern is exfiltration of confidential information outside of the corporate boundary. Right. And so the next use case we're going to look at is emails that have been sent to external recipients. And in this case, what we're focusing on is, and we can use the graph to really narrow these analyses, we want to find the communications where there's only external communications or communications that are being sent to a single external recipient. Yeah. And, and why that's important is um, if somebody's going to exfiltrate some information, typically the pattern is they'll send it to a external single account. They're not going to broadcast wide. Right. Typically right? their own account, right? Typically their own yeah, account, right? Exactly. So I'll run this query mm -hmm. and we'll get a view of uh, who's talking to who, internal and external in the organization. Right. Okay. So the data is rendered here. And uh, we can zoom into this graph. And what you'll see is that we've got red nodes and blue nodes. And so the blue nodes here represent the internal Enron email address, right. and then the red node represents an email address that is an external e email address. And remember, all of these individuals have sent uh, some communication that has a negative sentiment right. to a single external email address. And so uh, from this pattern of information, you know, we can scroll around in the graph here, and we can see you know, here's a very prolific set of communications. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also see, you know, that there's some, you know, there's some uh, potentially confidential information being exchanged here. So in this case, there's an email where the subject line is Enron default swaps. Right. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Which and we know where that led. Yeah. From a compliance perspective, maybe not a good thing. You can also see that there's email whose subject lines include things like rough drafts of documents and so forth. And strategic plans, of course. And strategic plans, right. And so um, with this capability, you know, we can then look at the pattern of communication. And then as a final thing, we can actually look at how this communication evolves over time. And so we have, uh, you know, the ability to basically play these communications forward. Mm -hmm. And so I can go ahead and do things like build this graph up over time. And you can see, you know, basically who are the most prolific communicators mm -hmm. um, and the volume of their communications as time moves forward. And I would imagine, too, you can zoom in on anomalous yeah. activity or spikes uh, that, as you see fit. That's right. right. Yeah. And so, for example, if we wanted to look at, you know, what's sort of happening later in this Enron data set, we can zoom in on some particular piece of time, and we can see what people are talking about uh, to their, uh, you know, external email addresses. And so here is, you know, a set of emails around systemic risk, FBI investigation, yeah, and so forth. The things you would expect to see. The things yeah. that you would expect to see. Yeah. So a very powerful capability, the ability to look at the sentiment, specific terms, and look at how that's evolving over time, as well as how different entities, both inside the company and outside the company are in communication. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you bet. Mm -hmm.